We are here in Lagos and, um, you know, also to betray what has been going on over time for the past 48 hours in the country is as regards to the fuel increase, the fuel hike, and also the fuel scarcity as well. We have been, you know, experiencing in different parts of the country. And um, just to let you know that in 2020, the Nigerian government announced the deregulation of the downstream sector leading to an increase in fuel prices. Now, moving over to 2021, where we saw fuel prices increased due to global crude oil price hikes and, of course, you know, Naira devaluation. Now, moving over to the year 2022, where we saw a further fuel increase, you know, occurred due to shortages, scarcity, and, of course, taxes. Now, this is 2024, and the same thing is still going on as we speak. What is the problem? How did we get here? What are some of the things that, you know, the NNPCL, and, of course, the federal government, even the Minister of Petroleum and Resources, is not directly looking at it as we will streamline our conversation to the effect the fuel hike is going to have on the economy. Welcome on board. My name is Nuoluwako uh, Stevens and joining me here in the studio is Mr. Owarabi Lukman, a public analyst. Thank you so much for gracing the studio today. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. So now I would love you to react to, um, you know, down memory lane and this is 2024 and we're still having the same situation happen over time. What is the root cause really? Well, um, you see, when a short man begins to cast a long shadow, you should know that the sun is about to set. It will always happen. And it's, it's, it is not only in Nigeria that you'll have this kind of situation. Um, crude oil, petrol, it's an international product. It is regulated by world bodies. You know, in case of Nigeria, it's OPEC. <clears throat> so they regulate price at every point in time. Sometimes it will go low due to some circumstances, and then sometimes it will also, also go up. So we, there is really nothing we can do about that. So we have to face the vicissitudes. When it goes low, we enjoy it. When it goes high, we enjoy it. If, we, if the price goes high, the country will enjoy it, but the citizens will have to pay more. Hmm. If it goes low, the citizens will enjoy it, but the country <laughs> will not get enough resources. Hmm. So that's the way it goes. So it's a balancing act. Interesting. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so now speaking about the citizens, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, um, with the current fuel hike right now in the country, how is it affecting an average Nigerian on the streets? Oh, definitely will affect because it's now going high. Not only, not only going high, it is now scarce. That is in our case. You know, because the NMPC, NMDPRA, and the, all, all the other bodies are not doing some things right. That's why, you know, we have scarcity. I, I remember in the last government, we, we hardly had scarcity like this, you know, because it was, they were doing what they call the swap deal, the direct sale, direct purchase, which uh, essentially means that you give out your crude, mm -hmm. they'll give you back uh, the products. That's what they were doing. So that eliminates a kind of looking for funds, forex, to pay for uh, products that will come. So it, it, was, it was a sweet deal. But the, the lacuna there was that there was a, what we call the subsidy, which is the major problem we have. And we didn't have enough of that in the, in the sense that we couldn't harness what we had very well. The, the price of fuel at that time was selling for about, I think it was 165 or something. And then the landing cost was much more than that. The landing cost was about 400 and uh, something. So the government had to bear the shortfall in the name of subsidy. The funny thing is, after the government now left, the the, uh, the Tenumbu government came in and said, we are no longer going to accept this subsidy. subsidy is gone. The subsidy is gone. Mm. And, you know, it, it made sense. I don't think subsidy should be on uh, petrol in the first place. You know, because when you look at the, when you look at what they were supplying the market back in the day, they were supplying about 67 million liters to the market, that's petrol, into the market. And when 
the subsidy gone statement came in, a few months down the line, it went down to about 40 million liters. So invariably, we were not really consuming much. We are not consuming million liters. So perhaps the excess was being smuggled. It's an incentive when you can make like 300, 400% of what, if you are selling locally, you probably will make about 30, 40%. But now you have opportunity to make about 300, 400%. So the incentive is there for people to smuggle. People who smuggle with the jerrycans, they make a lot of money out of the go to neighboring countries because they are not getting subsidized well. There's no way that we are well. So basically, what, what you're saying is you mm -hmm. were told in support of the current government, government in subsidy removal and all of that, you know, yeah, because, because it frees, it frees um, funds for you to do so many things, make the uh, economy productive. Right. Because when you subsidize, the money just waste. Over time this year, um, it's been in the news, the uh, federal government is still subsidizing um, PMA in whatever way that oh, Nigerians yes. do not understand yeah. at this point. How would you react to that? Well, there, because, because, you know, our current currency was being guided when uh, President Buhari was here and uh, um, this guy was a uh, CBN governor. So they were defending the Naira to so not float it. Float it, the, there's a kind of balancing act that happens. It will, it's like saying, find your natural level. Quickly, they floated. When Buhari was there, it was about 460 naira to the dollar. So when subsidy came and the naira became floated, it has now gone to about 1,590. 8, so you can imagine from 460 to 1,590. Hmm. So you are now chasing the dollar with more Naira. So that's the reason the subsidy had to come back because it came back to haunt us because of the floating of the Naira. That's essentially what happened, no other thing. So it's about the Naira, it's not necessarily about the petrol. The Naira value depreciated. Right. And when it depreciates, you have to use more Naira to chase the dollar. Okay, well, because because of the time frame and the time constraint, mm -hmm. I want us to talk about, you know, um, the way forward, because right now, everybody has been complaining, yada, 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 as regards, you know, how Nigerians are suffering with the current hardship, you know, despite the fact that um, a whole lot of things are happening in the country, let's also forget the food aspect is also there, insecurity, flooding in some part of the country. What is the way forward for, for the federal government? And also, considering the fact that the um, president, who also doubles to be the Minister of Petroleum Resources, is not in the country at the moment. What should uh, you know the federal government do? Yeah, it's not, not necessarily about whether it's in the country or not. Right. It's about the fact to get their acts right. Um, well, flooding, it's a natural occurrence. It will happen. Even if you know that, even if they had told them that it was, was going to happen, you know, it will still happen because there's really, there's hardly anything you can do about flooding. It's a natural occurrence. And about insecurity, I think the states also need to take particularly att pay particularly at particular attention to what's happening within their states. And the federal government will give them support. That is how it should be. So they should, the, the country should now have a sort of a constitutional amendment that enables state police. When you have state police, because they, they are closer to the people there, the federal government cannot sit down in Abuja and know what is going on in Kara Namoda, know what is going on in Ajegunle, know what is going on in Ibuto Elefun. Okay. So like that, we need to empower those in the states and the local governments to take care of the security. I think what is happening within those areas where you have insecurity largely is because of the people. They, they, they are impoverished, 
and they are easily manipulated to be part of the rot. That's okay, so, the, so just before we go, I want to get your take on the advent of Dangote Refinery because a lot of Nigerians are looking and having, you know, a beam of hope and a beam of light over the um, advent of, you know, oil production in the Dangote Refinery. What's your view as regards you see, that? The Dangote, Dangote Refinery is a lifesaver for Nigeria. It is. It is a lifesaver for Nigeria. You know, what was happening was that we were importing and they would give a particular quantity of what they are uh, bringing in. They can't even, even the, even the uh, NMPC GM, they could not see the kind of, the quantity that is brought into the country. Even if they bring it in the country and they distribute, nobody can determine how many liters we use a day. So for the Dangote refinery now, we are talking of a 650,000 barrels per day uh, refinery, mm -hmm. the biggest in Africa, the seventh biggest in the world. It is bigger than any refinery in the United States, it's bigger than any refinery in Saudi Arabia or Russia or in, most of, on, or in the whole of Europe. So we are talking of a refinery that has capacity to feed Nigeria. So should Nigerians be looking forward to a change as regards the pricing? Is no, it going to be lower will, now? The pricing will be minimal. You see, the main components there are the crude is sold at international price. So when you add refining cost to that, you will still get, Dangote, the landing cost of imported petrol is about 1,200 naira now. Okay. So when you, when, when uh, with all the economies of scale surrounding the Dangote refinery, you will still probably have it about 1,050. So what the government is doing now is that they are acting as off-takers. They are taking the whole of the consignment of Dangote Dangote refinery is going to be producing, it's going to be giving out about 25 million liters of petrol per day. And maybe in another one month or two, it will be raised to about 30 million liters. Dangote refinery has the capacity to give us about 103 million liters per day. And our okay. consumption level right. now is about 40 million liters per day. So it, there is capacity there. So there's a beam of hope for Nigerians. So there's a beam of hope. Okay. So we are not going to get it at extremely low price, but we are going to get advantages of economies of scale. Interestingly. Mm -hmm. um, we have been talking to Mr. Lukman Orulabi as regards the fuel hike, um, the effect of the economy. Hopefully, let's see if Nigerians will have this beam of hope as we get to, you know, have all of our hopes right now on Dangote Refinery. Let's not also forget that we still have, you know, um, our own refineries here in the country are still not working at the moment. We can only hope and pray for the best until then. God bless Nigeria. Do well to play your part in ensuring that Nigeria gets better again. Thank you so much for coming to the studio today, Mr. Awulabi. Hopefully we have you another time.